Hey everybody, it's Tony with Big T Bariatric and I'm back at you with another video. Today it is Tuesday, February 28th. I hope you're having a great day so far. Actually, this is my second video I made today, but the first one got ad limited again. Stupid YouTube. I hate when they do that. And so instead of posting that video and losing out on thousands of clicks of ad revenue, I'm going to save it for when they can manually review it. And it always turns out fine when they manually, manually review those videos. Um, so I'm gonna save it for tomorrow. So if you see tomorrow's video has today's date on it and I'm talking about my birthday and whatever, um, please pardon that, but it's a good video. Um, but today I'm going to go ahead and do another one. It's my 600 pound life boyfriends and girlfriends who are enablers. But before I do, if you could do me a huge favor, please hit the subscribe button down below. I greatly appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. And so to post today, you're going to see it tomorrow as well. But I just want to thank everybody who helped make my birthday very, very special yesterday. I really appreciate it. I received a lot of happy birthdays and just a lot of great support and love yesterday. And the um, live stream that I did was the best one yet. I had so many people come in and want to celebrate my birthday with me. So I'm very, very thankful. I appreciate you very much. I love you. And, um, and you'll see again this tomorrow. But I'm going to get right into this video. It's my 600 pound life, boyfriends and girlfriends who were enablers. So this should be interesting. These videos get a lot of attention when I talk about uh, enablers on the show. So let's get into it. One of the most frustrating parts of my 600 pound life is not just watching the patient destroy their lives, but watching their enabling family members or partners help create the environment that's killing them. Though there are definitely some supportive partners on the show, oftentimes the only support the boyfriend or girlfriend shows is bending to their partner's every whim when they ask for food that they know they're not supposed to have. Yeah, good partners on the show are very few and far between. And that's why when I say, you know, when I say something like I, I probably wouldn't date a big girl who is part of the fat positivity movement, or I wouldn't date somebody who is a feeder. This is the reason why, because they're not very supportive. They're not good relationships. They get their intimacy from feeding or being fed. That's what the whole relationship is about. And that's why they're together. If it wasn't for that food dynamic, they wouldn't be together at all. I don't think that's a good, wholesome relationship. That's not what I'm personally looking for. So yeah, I'm definitely not going to be in a relationship with somebody who's a feeder or somebody who is in the fat positivity movement and doesn't care about health and size and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, most of these people, I, I often say you cannot get to be 600 pounds without an enabler. You've got to have somebody who is taking care of you, taking care of you, feeding you, shopping for you, and getting you everything that you want. Because at that point, you're not even going grocery shopping. In today's video, we're going to be calling. Okay, you're going grocery shopping. I say you're not even going grocery shopping, but you know most of them can't even drive because they can't fit behind the steering wheel. So you're going to have somebody, if you do go to the grocery store, somebody going with you, somebody buying the food for you because you don't work, right? Um, you need somebody cooking for you, cleaning for you, cleaning between your folds for you, all the other nasty stuff that, that goes on. Um, but yeah, you can go to the store, but you need somebody to push you around or you get on a one of those motorized carts or something and you can't get up, so you need someone to reach the high shelves for you. So you either can't go shopping yourself or you need someone to go along with you to help you out because, let's face it, you're not getting out of that cart for nothing. Calling these types of partners out. So, with that said, here are a few My 600 pound Life boyfriends and girlfriends who were enablers. Before we get started though, leave a comment down below. What's the best My 600 pound Life season? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you enter in to our monthly shoutout giveaway. Though Bethany's 18-year-old daughter does most of the mothering for the family, Bethany still rules the household from her armchair. And her husband Sheldon, though he's pretty quiet throughout the episode, doesn't do much about this dynamic, and heavily enables it by taking the view that if Mama wants it, Mama gets it. Yeah, I've reacted to he her. Comes home. I've reacted to her a few times already, but yeah, it's, it's just a dangerous dynamic because um, her kids take care of her every whim when he's not around. And the only time he comes home is to bring her food. Like there's no intimacy in that relationship. It's all about him bringing her food and the kids make her food when, but when they're at school or whatever, he's bringing her home lunch and stuff like that. It's, it's a very, very sickening dynamic that they have. On his break every day to bring Bethany her next meal so that she can keep eating around the clock. And he's never had plans to confront her about her terribly unhealthy lifestyle. He frames it as that he's not going to tell her how to take care of herself. But he really can't claim that he's just leaving her to her own devices, since he's actively contributing as well. 
My husband, Sheldon, comes home on his lunch break to bring me my next meal. We've never really fought her on it because, you know, if mama wants, mama gets. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're helping her kill herself. That's what you're doing. If you truly cared about somebody, you're going to sit down with them and you're going to say, listen, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to enable you. I'm not going to allow you to keep killing yourself. Things have gone too far. But to say, I'm not going to tell her how to take care of herself, you're supposed to be with her to help her take care of herself. Like, that's what being in a relationship is, is to really show love and care towards somebody. If you don't care enough about her that you're not going to help take care of her in that way, you're not there for love. You're there for your own selfish devices. You enjoy that she's big. And so you're going to help keep feeding her. I'm not going to tell her how to eat. I'm not going to tell her how to take care of herself. But once I'm done, he makes sure I have enough to hold me over until Isabella and Zoe get home from school. <laughs> so not only does he bring her food, like burgers and fries, after just having two huge plates of food and honey buns and everything else for breakfast, he brings her enough food to make sure that she survives until her kids come home a few hours later. So that's lunchtime, right? So he comes home from lunch, brings her food. That's about, what, noon, 1 o'clock? But he needs to bring her extra food to make sure that she's held over until her kids get home a few hours later. Like, seriously, you don't think you have a food addiction at that point? Fatty mm -hmm. Joe's. At that point, he's just working to, to feed her, right? He goes to work to make sure he can bring her fast food every single day. Husband Josh is certainly enabling her unhealthy food habits, but what's most worrying about him is that he's dangerously attached to his role as her full-time caregiver, despite knowing and admitting that the food she's eating are killing her, and even admitting himself that he's helping kill her. He admits to being afraid that she's not going to need him anymore if she loses the weight, and that he can see it happening already. Josh is very transparent. That's, that's the worst kind, right? Like, you're afraid somebody's going to leave you if they get skinny. So you keep them fat. And, you know, you only choose the fat ones because they don't have really a whole lot of attention from other people. So that's just your insecurity. And your insecurity is killing the person you claim to love. Like, look at her head. It's like twice the size of yours there, buddy. I mean, it's like you're, you're honestly killing her because you're so scared that she's going to lose the weight and go find somebody else. But if you were actually a good, loving partner, she wouldn't want to go find somebody else. She'd be happy with you. But his own goals don't align with Betty Jo's weight loss goals. And it's pretty chilling to hear him say about his own wife that his biggest fear is not her being turned down for surgery or even dying on the operating room table, but that if she loses the weight, she'll no longer need him or something. It's it's really messed up. Here's a clip. I probably ate a couple hours. No, I could eat, eat that whole thing myself. I mean, really? Yeah. It's a lot of chicken. I think Josh sometimes is an enabler for Betty Joe because he does bring the food to her. I know I do bring a lot of the food into the house. The fast food, the chips, the soda, is keeping Betty Joe the way she is. I know I'm helping kill her. You can just see. Like, at, at that point, if she dies, you should be charged with attempted murder or involuntary manslaughter or something. Like, you are helping kill her because of your insecurity. Like, you realize you're doing it. That's the thing. You realize you're helping her stay fat and you're helping kill her. You fully admit it. Like how evil and disgusting can you be? That's not love. That's not love at all. Her life fading. She may be denied the surgery or she can be approved and then there's the risk of her dying on the table during the surgery. But my biggest fear is actually her dropping the weight and leaving me. I don't care that if you die on the table, honey, I, I don't care about any of this. I'm only afraid about my own lust being fulfilled by feeding you. And if, if you leave me, like, that's my biggest fear. Like, really? Like, she's going to die on the operating table if she stays big. So the fact that you're not helping her lose the weight and get the weight off and be at a healthier weight for the surgery, you're increasing her risk of death. She's going to leave you either by death or by losing the weight. So either way, you're going to lose there, buddy. So why don't you try to be a good partner to her and actually take care of her and help her get healthy? And then there's a better chance she'll stay with you. But if she doesn't get healthy, she's going to die. And then you're going to be alone anyways. 
While we don't see Shni's husband Freddy do anything terribly awful at the beginning of her episode, he does passively enable her by seemingly not saying no to anything while grocery shopping. Where Freddy becomes one of the worst enablers on the show, though, is when he actually sneaks Shni's junk food within the hospital when she's supposed to be on a controlled diet. And obviously being the more mobile of the two, he was probably the one that carried out the plan to actually dispose of the pizza box, where it looked like it belonged to another patient. Freddy also jumped to take the blame when Dr. Now called them out on sneaking food, something the two probably also planned in advance to help them get away with it. Okay, come on. I hear the sugar. We need some sugar. I need it. I can't eat spaghetti without sugar. Is that a thing? Do you guys put sugar in your spaghetti sauce? I hear some people say it's a must. Um, I, I don't think I've heard of it. I don't like it's overly sweet sauce, but... Um, let me know down below if you put sugar in your spaghetti sauce. Yeah, sometimes my store, they really are the worst foods for us. Anything that she desires, she gets it. The staff has seen her eating burgers and pizza that Freddie has been sneaking in. See what I, I mean, that, that's proof right there, right? Anything she desires, she gets. You think that's love. You, you think you're helping her and loving her by giving her what she wants, but you're just afraid of her turning on you and snapping at you and being angry. Like, that's not love on her part, and that's definitely not love on your part. And you taking the blame right this, right here for the pizza, like, you're not helping her at all. She's in the hospital because she is this close to death, and you don't realize that. Yeah, fine. Freddie. What about Freddie? That belongs Freddie. Shanae, the lying need to stop now. It always angers me when she points at Freddie and says, Freddie, Freddie. Like, she already knows what's coming. She knows that she just got caught. And she's going to lay it all on Freddie, and Freddie knows that he's going to take that blame for her because he probably told her, or she probably told him to. If it was me to eat it, she didn't eat any of that. You both need to stop lying. 38-year-old Tommy lives with his fiance Amanda, who takes care of everything around the house, including cooking and bringing him his eight meals every day. Amanda eight meals a day, dang. I thought I was doing a lot, eating like five to six meals a day. Of course, they were very tiny meals, but he's eating eight times a day, and it's not tiny meals. I'm pretty sure about that. Amanda was actually engaged to somebody before Tommy, who was over 700 pounds and passed away two months before she met Tommy. And despite Amanda describing in graphic detail how she could literally see her late fiancé deteriorating before he died, she doesn't seem to be doing much to stop it. What? I need to react to this one. That's disgusting. You already lost your fiance who was 700 pounds and died of his weight. And then you go attach yourself to another big guy and you see him deteriorating and dying in the same way. And you don't say nothing about it. You don't do nothing about it. You don't, and you, you keep enabling him and bringing him food. Oh man. Enablers are some of the worst, most evil, evilest people on the planet. I'm telling you, and they can get away with it. Like these people aren't going to go to jail for, uh, you know, manslaughter or anything like that. They can keep enabling, enabling and keep feeding and whatever. And I, I get it. That's that's the person eating the food that's 100% responsible. But it's that much harder to lose the weight if you have somebody who's trying to keep you fat for a specific reason, because you're afraid of losing them too. Like they're afraid of losing you if you lose the weight, but you're afraid of losing them because Guess what? You don't got very many options out there. So somebody decided that they, they love you and they want to be with you. And so they're going to feed you. You're like, well, I'm going to keep getting what, what they want to give me or else I'm afraid of losing them too. Amanda brings Tommy heaps of food that she must know isn't good for him, even obliging his need for fast food on the way to Houston. And noticing that Amanda is severely overweight herself, Dr. Now also points out that they are enabling each other to eat poorly. It's honestly a shame, and even a little suspect, that Amanda isn't applying anything she should have learned from what happened with her previous fiancé. Exactly. I mean, she's big too. So she likes the big guys who are probably using their disability money to buy her food. And, and so she's bringing it to him and he's giving it to her like, like that. That's their whole relationship right there. They're not pounding cheeks. They're uh, pounding food. Like, like that's their intimacy. And Amanda is the one that cooks and brings it to me to make sure I'm happy. And she always makes something good. Very, very good. But my favorite is when she makes me a bunch of bologna sandwiches. My last fiance, I began to notice serious signs of deterioration in him. The, the discoloration is toenails. I just looked at my toes. <laughs> they look fine to me. Almost the jaundice color in his skin. It's a cross between my H2A recipe and my tetrazenia recipe. It's good. It tastes good too. Enjoy. 
So if you are living together and she's the one who feeds you, where you're both overweight, then we have dysfunctional dynamic between you two. And yeah, Dr. Now is right. It's a very dysfunctional dynamic between the two of them. Um, it's, it's just downright evil. Like, she's, she's already killed somebody because of her size and the way that she's feeding him. And she's already done it to somebody else who, who died. Like, that's not a wake-up call. Enabling each other to read. James K's fiance Lisa was one of the most notorious enablers on the show, bringing James every single forbidden food item that he asked for, no matter how much closer to death's door he was getting. Dr. Now got pretty furious with the two of them multiple times and always made sure to point out Lisa's enabling and how she was basically feeding him to death, but no amount of lecturing. Oh man, his leg was looking bad. But yeah, Lisa was one of the worst enablers on the show to the point of death. Again, she should be in jail for attempted murder or something. I don't know what the exact term would be, but yeah, when you know somebody's on their death door and they're literally needing to stay in the hospital to lose weight and you still keep bringing them food, like, man, that's the worst of the worst. It made Lisa stop sneaking him food within the hospital and helping him break the diet at home. And predictably, with Lisa still waiting on him hand and foot, no change for James's health or attitude ever came about. I've got you um, six eggs uh, and about five or six pieces of sausage. Is that okay? Mom, he really doesn't need that much, seriously. Yeah. That's what it takes to make him full. So when I You don't have to make him full. Like, <laughs> that's the thing is you don't have to be full every time that you eat. Just eat enough to, you know, whatever. I, I don't know. It's like the daughter is the only one who cared about him. And he's dead right now, and she's probably devastated. You know, she's trying to say, hey, you don't need to give them that much food. You don't need to give them six pieces of sausage and six eggs. And I mean, I used to eat that much. It, it's ridiculous how disgusting I would feel after eating that amount of food. Bring fast food home. I know that I'm giving James something that he doesn't need. Food. Got it. Well, at least maybe that'll take care of your headache. Are you gonna give MSG laden food and salt and all that's going to take care of your headache? No, buddy. I'm sorry. It's going to make it worse. If you have a headache because you haven't eaten in 10 minutes, I mean, that's that, that's a problem. Maybe you should be drinking more water. Take a Tylenol something, but you don't need to rush out and get more food to, to take care of your headache. Give me one little rig roll. I gave you two. 39-year-old LaShanta met her boyfriend JT while she was in the hospital, where he apparently saw her lying on a stretcher, and it was love at first sight. JT claims that he has always been attracted to big women, because he feels that they're nicer and more cuddly, and he very clearly valued his own preferences over LaShanta's quality of life. And so, ever since their first date, which took place while she was bedridden, JT has been taking care of her and enabling her weight problem, bringing her food and groceries and staying unbothered by her health issues as long as she stays as big as she likes. I mean, that's the absolute worst, right? When you put your own preferences, put your own taste and desires and lusts over the life of somebody else. I mean, how can you be that selfish? I mean, if you have a fetish for, for big girls and you want to keep them fat because that's what you like, like, the problem is you. Maybe you need to get some psychological help. Like, I know some people say, hey, no kink shaming here, but that, that's a kink that should be shamed. Keeping people fat and killing them for the purpose of you getting off on it. I mean, that's just utterly disgusting. This becomes clear after the appointment with Dr. Now, when JT let LaShanta know that he was getting worried she would lose too much weight. And sure enough, he breaks up with her shortly after, in fear that he would lose his attraction. She's probably better off without him. But it's really sad that part of her failure was probably due to him leaving her without any support. I mean, yeah, she was devastated that he left, but really it was the best thing for her. And she didn't realize that. And so, you know, to her, that was a devastating blow. I met LaShanta at the hospital. I was at a, an appointment. I looked over and I saw she was on a stretcher. You know, she was beautiful, had a beautiful smile. So it was love at first sight. Bigger women. <laughs> love at first sight. I saw her big, beautiful body hanging off the edge of, of that stretcher. And man, I thought I had to get me into some of those roles. No, uh, nicer, um, more cuddly. My first date was in this bed with Jeremy because everything happens in this bed. That bed that probably hasn't had sheets changed in months. It's probably full of bacteria and poop and whatever else. Yeah, I'm sure that was a great date. Very romantic. Oh, Bianca. Oh, so hey, how you doing? You feeling all right today? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. 
At the ages of 42 and 39, Lee and Renee both have a massive weight problem that led them to come onto the show together. They share in their food addiction and seem to encourage bad behavior in one another. For example, both getting mad if their helper, Lee's sister Casey, doesn't make what they want to eat. What's even more sad about their situation is how it started. The two actually met in a bariatric clinic where Lee went when he began to lose his mobility and knew that he needed to get some help. Instead, he met Renee there and the two fell in love and left the clinic, becoming each other's enablers and continuing to let their weight gain spiral out of control together. I was there to get help and hoping to turn my life around. But when I met Renee there, we fell in love and had to leave. So we never got the help we needed. And this is what one of the worst cases on the entire show of two people who met in rehab or a bariatric clinic and decided that they loved each other too much that they couldn't wait a year. They couldn't wait and decide to wait and, and get together later. No, they decided that they were going to leave the clinic and get fat together, and that was just absolutely horrible. I need three chicken strip sandwiches, a number one with the bacon, but I want mayonnaise and smoke sauce on it. And we need to order cheese sticks, too. All right, anything else for you? But now... <laughs> and what for your wife? <laughs> I am so afraid that I am not going to live long enough to marry the woman that I love and that I no longer even have a future unless someone can save me from myself. Yeah, those are bad stories. Those are some of the worst enablers on the show. Um, I've seen some of them, but um, yeah. Again, it's it's really, really bad. Like, they should, be, their family should sue them or something. I don't know. There's got to be some consequences. Again, you're responsible for what you eat, but um, it should be considered some sort of assisted suicide or attempted murder or something that you know somebody is near death, but you keep bringing it to them. Like if you're a drug dealer, right, and you give somebody drugs and they overdose on it, aren't you like partially responsible for that? But but nothing is wrong with food. People can just keep enabling food all they want, keep put, put it in your veins if you want to, and it, it's no problem. There's no consequences for, for the enabler. While the enable is near death to, to dying, it's, it's, it's sickening. But anyway, that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. And subscribe if you haven't. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. God bless you.